you a story. Now, I'll tell you that first, we have an expression here, not a word of a lie. And if someone tells you something, and then you hear them say that, then most likely it is a word of a lie. So here's a little story called, not a word of a lie. Now it's often been said, and I can't disagree, that there's no men so tough as our men of the sea. But two of the toughest, at the rights of it was known, were Kenny and Mike, who lived in Balorne. Now one day last year, in a moderate gale, in a 16-foot punt with a double reef sail, they went to go fishing in their usual spot with orders from Mom. Get something for the pot. They got a few sculpins, hauled up some kelp, tried a few different places. Nothing would help. Oh my, said Mike, looks like a dead lass. I know now, said Kenny. Mother won't be some cross. We try somewhere else, said Mike with a sigh. Perhaps down around Nain or Ireland's eye. So hoist up the sail, so tight as a bar. Don't bother, said Ken. I can scholar that far. But the fish wouldn't bite, and their luck surely stank in the gull for the straits or on Funk Island Bank. Let's try across the pond, said Mike with a smile. All right, said Ken. But you scull for a while. Well, two hours later, they were anchored off France, having passed through two hurricanes, Elfie and Blanche, with waves 60 feet and winds 90 knots. Not too bad, thought Ken, a bit of a lot. But there was nothing off France and nothing off Spain, except a small submarine that they threw back again. While crossing the equator, they hauled up a squid with 60-foot arms and a 30-foot head. Oh, my, said Mike, that's a giant one, I think. He had just gotten sprayed with a punching of ink. Throw it back, said Ken. Mother don't like them things. But they cut off one arm for a meal of squid rings. Off the Cape of Good Hope, they got into a fog. For two or three hours, it was thick as a bog. When it finally cleared up off some Antarctic bay, a hundred-mile iceberg was blocking their way. Oh, my, said Mike. There's one thing, then another. Trying to get supper for father and mother. That's right, boy, said Ken. I can't see a way through, so pass up that axe till I claves it in two. A short while later, off the coast of Somalia, they ran into some pirates who said, We'll kill ya. Mike knocked out two dozen, one after another, and said, Go on, homeboys, or I'll wake up my brother. Next, they ran into a merman named Saul, who told them he wanted to visit Nepal. But they say you can't swim there, he said with a sigh. So I guess I'll just sit here and blubber and cry. Don't be so sooky, Ken said in a rant. I'd like to visit the moon, but I can't. I suppose not, said Saul, and he cheered up a bit. Uh, I have a nice blowfish, if your mom would like it. Politely declining their offer from Saul, they rowed to Australia and set out a trawl. Then they rowed round New Zealand, came back for a look, but there was still nothing there that mother would cook. Off Hawaii, they surfed on some hundred-foot waves, won a prize, and got decorated with lays. Eastbound again, Kenny said, look out front, tis mom coming out, in father's old punt. Now where in the world have you young fellows been? Your poor old father, she said, what a sin. He came all over sooky and started to sicken when his supper was only a bucket of chicken. Sorry, mom, said Mike, there's not much on the go. Not much on the go, she said. No, I know. Her Rodney was full of the fish she had caught, from the keel to the top of the top, where she sat. Get on home out of it through the Panama Canal, and get your father his tea. You know he's not well. I'm just going to start round Cape Horn while it's light and drop into Rio for bingo tonight. Feeling slightly dejected, the boys started rowing, not really watching out where they were going till all of a sudden they ran hard ashore on the Galapagos Island of San Salvador. Oh my, said Mike, it's as hot as a sauna. We don't call this hot, said a talking iguana. And don't get ideas, because I don't taste like chicken. Then his speech got all slurred, because his forked tongue kept flicking. So they shoved off again and headed northeast. Mike said, I hope we can get a few Connors at least. We better get something, Ken said, starting to roll. Her mother won't give us some rasin, I know. A short while later, in the fading daylight, the Panama Canal's western gate hove in sight. Not far now, buddy, said Ken with a grin, but a sign said, 
we're closed. Please come back again. Oh, my, said Mike. Well, that's it, thundered Ken. You see, the boys weren't supposed to be out after 10. Pass up that oar, Ken said with a roar, till I digs away through to the Caribbean shore. From that point on home, the trip was routine, and they were tied to the stage at about 9.15. Father was crousty and wanting his tea and grumbling about gas from that old KFC. Next morning, their mother tied up to the wharf. She'd won jackpot in Rio and then headed off north. The fish she had caught was all salted and dry. Don't say you never got nothing, she cried. And so that's the story of Michael and Ken, about average toughness for Newfoundland men. But if I came to a racket, I know that I'd rather tackle both of the boys and tackle their mother. There you go. Thank you. <laughs>